All right, FAQ number 35. Why did God harden Pharaoh's heart? This is another one that uh, some people will attack the Bible on, and they will say, you know, the Bible does not teach free will because, after all, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So Pharaoh really had no choice because God hardened his heart. And it says Pharaoh's going to harden his heart, and then it says that God hardened his heart. So how did Pharaoh have free will? Well, let's look about that. Why did God harden his heart? Well, Exodus chapter 3, verse 19 says here, And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. And that's exactly what happens if you read the story there in the first part of the uh, book of Exodus here. And of course, <clears throat> if you know the story, if you haven't read it, read it. But um, Moses goes in and he's continually saying to Pharaoh, hey, we need to go out, sacrifice unto the Lord, you know, out here in the wilderness. Everybody has to go. And, and Pharaoh's like, well, you know, you can go, but just leave the children and the women behind. You can go, but leave your animals behind. You can, you know, and there, there's plague after plague after plague of, you know, where the Lord is basically showing his power because Pharaoh would have been the most powerful ruler at the time. So God is showing his power that he can, you know, basically destroy a nation. And Egypt was destroyed. I mean, they were destroyed, uh, you know, all their, you know, a lot of their homes and things were destroyed and, and uh, money was, you know, they were really, had gone through all this wrath of God, basically. And uh, the firstborn was killed. Uh, that was the final one that finally, okay, now they left. But they even, you know, as we read there in, in Exodus chapter 3, they, they even, you know, borrowed all the, the jewelry, basically, the wealth from the Egyptian women, and uh, they left with it. It's very interesting there that the, that the Bible says that God actually gave the Jewish people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And if God did that for the Jews, he certainly does it for us as Christians. And uh, that's why the Lord can protect you and the Lord will protect you. And uh, quite often times there have been, I know many times in my own life, where I've been out tracting and some thing gets kind of dangerous and, and it's just like the Lord protects Lord can can watch over you and actually, you know, kind of hide you and, and take you through uh, stores or whatever else. And and uh, you can put out a lot of tracks and things like that. So just an interesting little side note there. But Exodus chapter 7, verse 4, says here, But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall, shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. Okay, so another reason why God was hardening Pharaoh's heart was because he wanted to show not only his power to the Jewish people, but he also wanted to show it to the Egyptians, to the lost heathen. So, God, a lot of times, when you get people that are very wicked, God will show them his power. That happens a lot here in America and around the world. You'll get these sodomite uh, parades or rallies or whatever. And uh, God oftentimes will show his power. And they keep pushing the Lord and saying, oh, you know, is that the best you got? Well, they haven't seen the best that God's got yet, by the, by the way. And another interesting study that you can do, and I have it here on uh, YouTube, an older sermon that I did, an older audio sermon, and it was I think it was called The Coming Exodus. And it talks about comparing what was going on back here in the book of Exodus to the book of Revelation, where Moses and Elijah return, and a lot of the same plagues are being poured out. Only this time it's not Pharaoh, it's going to be the Antichrist. Very interesting. But uh, another verse of Scripture here, look up Proverbs chapter 21, just to show you another part of this. Proverbs 21, verse 1, 
It says here, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. So anybody that's out there, any political ruler, God can take their heart and he can turn them. And of course, you know, you get like Obama or something like this. He's not really a political ruler. He's a political uh, figurehead. He's a puppet. Uh, the guys that rule him and run him are behind the scenes. Okay, he's just the one that they put out there to, you know, take the jokes and whatever else that come against him. But if Obama had total control here in America, God could still take his heart and say, do this, do that, you know. And again, you know, this, this whole thing of people saying Christians should be involved in politics. We should write our congressmen and we should this and we should that. We should run for political office and everything else and stuff. You know, and, and just saying that you should just win souls and, and live as a Christian, you know, that's weak and cowardly. I don't agree with that. I think that if we're doing the work of the Lord and, and uh, working very hard for the Lord, I think the Lord's going to preserve things. Okay? Um, you know, again, the Bible teaches that. We're not going to turn to it, but about the thing of uh, a small remnant basically preserving things uh, in a nation. So, why did God harden Pharaoh's heart? To show his glory. And sometimes when you get a guy that's in leadership, God will do that. Uh, there was a situation there in the book of Acts where King Herod, one of the you know, men named Herod, there were multiple Herods in the New Testament, but this one, uh, King Herod there, he spoke, got up and he gave this great oration, this great speech, and the people were going, it's the voice of a God, not a man. And God just went, bam, and dropped him dead. God can do that. And there are other times that the Lord will let that same kind of blasphemy come out of a man's mouth, like Obama. He's acted like he's God different times. And God allows it to happen. Why? Because God has reasons. God has purposes. You know? But Obama's really, 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 you know, treading on some thin ice when he starts to do that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm certainly not wishing that God drops him or anything like that. Certainly I'm not wishing for that. But the fact of the matter is it's very dangerous for a leader to start messing around and trying to say that he's God. Uh, it's very dangerous. Um, God can harden hearts and he can do things for his glory. That's why God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And you don't take that and say, well then, see, that proves that nobody has free will and you know we're all just predestinated to go to heaven or to hell and we have no say in the matter. Uh, that's nonsense. Again, you can watch my study on Calvinism. I'm predestinated not to be a Calvinist. You can watch that study to see that, yes, we do have a free will. Uh, definitely. So that'll be it for that one. We will see you in the next FAQ.